Greetings from the Holy Hill. I am the Reverend Hugh Bartlett, Director of St. Anne's Anglican Church in Fox Hill, New Providence, Bahamas. We are delighted that you have decided to join us for these devotions today. May we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen wish to share a reading from Acts chapter 4, verses 32 through 37. Now, the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, but no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned the lands or houses, sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. There was a Levite a native of Cyprus, Joseph, to whom the apostles gave the name Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He sold a field and be that belonged to him, then bought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. The word of the Lord. Our reading from Acts 4 reports on a group that, uh, that had a different approach to community living. All the believers were said to be of one heart and soul. All their earthly goods were being held in common ownership. There was a common purse and none of the believers was in need. What is not said in our text from Acts is what influenced them to change their understanding of communal living. However, we can learn something from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 about this. In the text, we hear Paul reassuring the Thessalonian Christians that the followers of Jesus both those who have died and those who are alive will all respond to the archangel's trumpet call at the Lord's return to go and be with the Lord. Friends, it was the expectation of the Lord's return in their lifetime that influenced their understanding, that is the Christians of Thessalonica's understanding and Christianity generally of the communal living that they had adopted. It was the expectation of the Lord's return in their lifetime that influenced their attitude towards ownership of things. However, there are some relevant lessons we can learn from the early community of Christians. One, Love demands that we care for the needy among us. Two, love demands that we encourage others. A great concern we hear from the Acts of the Apostles is for the needy. Acts describes a community that was teaching self-denial, which would mean taking up our cross daily 
if we wish to be a follower of Jesus. Self-denial demands greater love for God than for our own being and our own needs. This love demands that we act as if we were or we are only managers of God's gift. God is the owner of all. Romans 11 and 36 tells us, For from him and through him and to him are all things, to him be glory forever. Secondly, love demands that we encourage others. This is special in that we, in that to be genuinely hopeful for others demands that we bury a competitive attitude and adopt a harmonizing spirit. A competitive demeanor seeks to make sure that one has the upper hand whereas the authentic soul is only concerned with the other soul fulfilling its purpose. Being an encourager is about pardoning, partnering with a soul friend to bring out the best of that person. Acts tells us of Joseph of Cyprus who sold a field that belonged to him and brought the money to the apostles and they called him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. Becoming a Christian is not the end of our journey, but the beginning. We are duty bound by our confession of faith to love our neighbors as ourselves. This is the unconditional love that is described by the Greek word agape. Such love, since it is unconditional, is shared in prosperity and adversity. In prosperity, such love encourages others not to replace God with self and other goals. In adversity, such love encourages others to get up after each fall. Amen. May we pray. St. Ignatius prayed a prayer that I wish to share with us. Teach us, good Lord, to serve thee as thou deservest, to give and not to count the costs, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to toil and not to seek for rest, to labor and not to ask for any reward, save that of knowing that we do thy holy will, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining us for these devotions. Please feel free to share them with your family and friends. God bless you and have an awesome day.